welcome to season three of Laughing Mummy. Season three will be like season one, mainly about the beginning videos. No editing, it's just reading videos. So I've decided that although many people I think like the editing style, I'm going to go with the old school and not edit my reading videos. As it's just going to be reading videos and it's something really that cool to edit. So therefore, I feel like I'm just going to continue this version without any editing. So therefore, you guys will just see me talk. And I'll put timestamps in the description. Never. Because they always, because whenever you're a kid and they see and they disable your comments, they, they will no longer... headache and I'm tired and on top of that I got people calling me from some type of Medicare or health insurance or something like that shut up holy freaking pepperoni pieces all right so continue what I was saying let's just get to it man that just ruined my entire talking page 30 oh yeah and it ruins the comments so whenever you're Timestamps are in there. If they if they disable your comments, it might work for a day or two, but after that they'll stop working. Even if you enable the comments again, so I think I might have to disable. I might have to let it disable and then re-enable it. And if it disables again, then re-enable it two times, and then I can be able to put the timestamps in, and it will work. I got a headache, and I don't feel nauseous or sick. I just got such a bad headache right now. Not bad, but you get the point. Like, kind of tight, kind of burning. You know. I don't have any infections, so we'll just continue this. That might that meant there were no potty breaks, and 30 minutes into the competition, Drew was really wishing he hadn't just downed a 64 ounce soda. A 64 ounce soda, yeah. Drew was the Drew was the first person to drop out, but a long time went before went by before anyone else did, and three hours later, everyone was still going strong. A lot of contestants had packed coolers with food because they might have, they might, they must have known that they were in for a long night. But Roderick and the other guys were prepared, so Roderick called Mom and asked her to bring the sandwich, them sandwiches. Mom was too busy to drive down to the dealership, so she went on me, she set me on my bike, and I went, and when I got there, I handed the guys their food. Bill was paranoid that he was gonna accidentally take his hand off the van, so he kept both hands on the vehicle, and that meant I had to feed him which was kind of awkward. I stuck around for a little while, but it was pretty boring watching a bunch of people standing there doing nothing. So I went home, but in the morning, Roderick's van wasn't in the garage, which meant he was still at the dealership. Mom sent me back down there with ba bagels and orange juice, and even though a lot of contestants have quit overnight, there was still a handful of people still in it. But some of them looked like they were ready to crack. A few contestants started playing mind games to fist the psych other each other out. And one lady began singing really loud and out of tune. And some old guy opened up a can of what smelled like expired tuna. And another guy started reading the phone book from the beginning to annoy everyone else. And I guess that was way too much for Mackie because he lost his nerve before the guy even got through the the bees. Tweet. Bridge bridges. Lisa. Brighton, James Lindler, Ella, okay, I don't even know, head stop, I don't want to throw up, it was pretty clear that, I'm not feeling like I want to throw up, but it doesn't mean I'm, forget it, I'm saying, I'm, it was pretty s clear that sleep deprivation, wait, the privation was taking its toll on everyone, and the one lady got eliminated for trying to pet a dog that wasn't even there. Who's my good little boy? Oh, you. Oh, yes, you are. What? A few hours later, there were only a few people left. Bill and Roderick seemed like they might fall over at any second, and there were up against a lady who looked like she could easily go another two days, and I think the guy, guys were seriously considering, considering giving up at that point, but the lady was watching some game show on her a game show on her TV, and when she got a question right, she lost her focus just enough to get eliminated. 
I thought that was the end of the contest, but it wasn't because Bill and Roger got into an argument over which one should actually win the van. Uh oh. Roderick said it should be him because all the band equipment was at his house, but Bill said it would be him, should be him, because he'd never had his own vehicle before, and those two guys are more stubborn than I realized, because neither of them budged for two full hours. Around 10 o'clock that night, Roderick came up with a com 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 promise. He said that they could share the vehicle, and whenever the band didn't need the, whenever the band didn't need the van for a show, Bill could use it. But Bill said it, he was okay with that, so they took their hand off the van at the same time and shook on it. But they probably should have checked to make sure that no one was on the other side of the vehicle be before they let go, because I'm pretty sure the guy who ended up winning was only a few minutes away from throwing in the towel himself. Tuesday, after the hands-on van contest, Roderick and his bandmates realized they weren't going to play any, any, going to play they weren't going to be playing any, we're not, was, oh, I'm going to die. They weren't going to be playing shows anytime soon. So they've be, been brainstorming other ways to get their music out there. They decided what they needed to do was to post a bunch of stuff on social media and build a following. That way so they could create an account and start posting clips of them playing music in our basement. Those first posts didn't get get many views so they decided to change things up but by filming in more interesting places but those videos didn't take off either danger a1 disposal keep out then the other day bill dropped the speaker on his foot and maggie was filming it when it happened the, they posted the video as a joke and it was the most popular one yet then they started posting a lot more stuff like that and their channel really take took off but after a few trips to the emergency room, the guys realized things have gotten out of control, and even though they had a, a ton of likes, they weren't getting their music out there, which was the whole point to begin with. So the guys went back to just posting clips of them playing music, and then lost a ton of followers, and after a while they even gave that up because it wasn't worth the hassle. Wednesday, Roderick decided that loaded diapers should forget about filming clips for social media and focus on making a real music video instead. So the guys have been watching a lot of metal chihuahuas early early videos and they decided their best one was for the song Dog Eat Dog, which they filmed at a kennel with real chihuahuas. They the very the reason that video is so famous is because nobody fed the dogs before the sh the shoot started. And as soon as they opened the cages, the dogs went out, went after the lead guitarist who was snake snacking on a ham and cheese sandwich. Scream, yep, 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 yep. Roderick and the guys spent a lot of time talking about what they could do in their own music video to top Metal Chihuahua. Drew said maybe they could shoot a music video in the sewers, but they didn't figure out how to get Roderick drums down the manhole. Mackie suggested they filmed their song Monkey House in a real monkey house at the zoo, but they were a little worried the monkeys might act up. Then Bill said they should do a video where they parachuted out of a plane and Roderick liked that idea because he said it would get people's attention. But Mackie has a fear of height, so he voted he voto, voto, vetoed that one. Drew said that maybe we could do what Metal Chihuahua did for their dog eat dog video, only with babies. And everyone seemed to like that idea because they couldn't remember anyone doing something like it before. But it turns out you can't just borrow a bunch of babies for a few hours, or at least you can't in the state where we live. The guys realized they were getting a little ahead of themselves anyway because they needed to record a song before they could start thinking about making a music video to get along to go along with it. Loaded Diaper had recorded some of their music before, but they've never actually used professional equipment to do it. Last year, they taped a bunch of stuff on Manny's toy tape recorder, but I guess the playback quality isn't great on those things. And and anyway, my mom, mom erased everything they recorded after she got a call from the teacher at Manny's preschool. Their arms all waving as you get on your feet. Your bo their booty swaying like you ate some bad meat. What the freaking frick?
Roderick said it was time to do things the right way and record their music in a real studio, but just like everything else, those types of places cost a lot of money. So Bill asked his grandma if he could be a few months late with the rent, which gave the guys just enough money to pay for some time in a re recording studio. And even though they only needed one song to make a music video, they decided to record enough songs for a whole album. Roderick says that when Metal Chihuahua was big, bands was big. Bands used to put out albums with cool artwork on the record covers. And he got a few of their best albums on the wall above his bed. Metal Chihuahua, Dog with a Bone. Metal Chihuahua in the Doghouse. Wayne, Sebastian, Werewick, Stu. Roderick says that nowadays, people don't appreciate album art because they just download music on their phones. His plan is to release Loaded Diaper's first album as a vinyl record, so the art can be really big. Roderick and his bandmates, the bandmates went to a recording studio downtown today, and I decided to tag along. There was one room where the engineer had a bunch of computers, and another room with lots of in instruments and microphones. I guess the guys were pretty excited about all the different instruments because as soon as they saw them, they had to play every one. Eventually, Roderick said it was time for them to get serious. I thought they'd start recording songs right away, but they hadn't even decided what which ones to put on their album yet. And if you ask me, they probably should have figured that out before they got to the studio. It turns out Loaded Diaper has over 50 songs and they spent a lot of time trying to whittle it down to the 10 they wanted to record. All right, wait, we go to 60, yeah, that's right, wait, do we get 40, wait, 30? Okay, yeah. And I have no idea what made them choose some songs over others, because from the titles, it felt like they were all about the same kind of stuff. Wine, wait, one whipper. Can you smell, can you smell up, can you smell us now? Diaper overload, diaper igniter. Potty mouth, down the drain, monkey house, raise a stink, smell test, stink it up. Roderick thought they should have at least one track with swear words in it. Because that way you've got a parental warning sticker on your album. And he said that if you don't have one of those stickers, teenagers won't buy it. Parental warning, offensive lyrics. But Mackie said he didn't want to have any songs with swear words because he wanted to make an album his mom could enjoy. So Roderick said if they were making music for Mackie's mom, they then they might as well just quit right now. Then they got pretty heated between the two of them, and it took a long time for them to cool down after they were separated. Once, they, the, once that situation was under control, the guys debated which song they should record first. Bill thought it should be Can You Smell, Smell Us Now? Because he liked because he liked the line that goes, We're leaking through your speakers like a chocolate cow. But Drew said that line didn't even make sense because there's no such thing as a chocolate cow. So Bill went after Drew and then those two had to be separated. Roderick decided the song should be Diaper Overload, which was the first one he ever wrote. And I guess the other guys were tired of fighting because they agreed. But it didn't take long for a new problem to crop up. While Drew and Bill were arguing about song lyrics, Ma Mackie and it accidentally dropped his pick and it dropped his pick into the hole in the middle of the acoustic guitar. So the guys took turns trying to get pick back out, the pick back out, and I can't even tell you how much time that took. Eventually, Drew managed to shake a pick free, free, but it went straight down Bill's throat. Ooh, and it was kind of scary for a minute there. Weed, <sighs> splutter. Luckily, Mackie knew some sort of maneuver to get the pick dislodged from Bill's throat, and all I can say is that I'm glad there was a window between the engineer's booth and the room where the band was. Hack slap. Bill was badly shaken up, and he said he wanted some time to recover, but Roderick said they really needed to get going if they wanted to record a whole album. So everyone picked up their instruments and got in their places, and the engineer hit Record. Roderick played the drum into the di into di intro to Diaper Overload, and then Mackie and Drew started in with their guitars. But Bill only made it through two or three verses before he had to stop because apparently that guitar pick really did a number on his throat. Hack, hack.
some day somebody got Bill a bottle of water, and a few minutes later he was good to go. And the second time around, they managed to get all the way through the song without Bill choking. And you ain't been this covered since the last time it snowed. After that, Roderick and his bandmates were feeling pretty confident, and they were ready to t rip through the rest of their songs. But the engineers said they have to come back and do it another day because their time was up. So I guess if they want to finish their album, Bill is going to have to ask his grandma for a few more months of credit on his rent. Saturday, the guys were pretty bummed out they wasted so much time on the studio the other day, but they were glad they got that one song done, because that one song down, because that meant they could make the music video, which was their goal to begin with. They didn't have any money to produce their own video, but what they did was has a have was a gift certificate that Maggie's little sister never ended up using. Shooting Star Studio. The certificate enters the, the uh, owner to one studio session. But it turns out Shooting Star Studio doesn't do videos for original songs. They have a menu of songs you have to choose from, and I don't think the, the guys were all that thrilled with the selection. Best Friend Gossip, Puppy Love, Puppy Love, Play for School, Cute New Boy, Beach Day. Bill wanted to do the song about gossip, but Roderick wanted to do the one about being late for school because it sounded the most rock and roll. But Mackie said he had to he he got to make the decision because it was his sister's gift certificate. And even though I doubt they will ever show the video that they made to anyone, it looked like they had a lot of fun doing it. That's it for pages 30 to 60. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.